the very little critters that we came and trapped and nearly pushed to extinction may hold the keys to helping us with some of our biggest water resources challenges. We face major uh, problems um, moving forward with uh, with diminishing snowpacks, and climate change, and major water resources challenges. We have a very simple question. Could beaver potentially compete with a declining snowpack? A lot of our research is focused on trying to address and quantify that, uh, that very question. The location of Utah State couldn't be any better for researching beaver. There are historic beaver dams throughout the tributaries of the Logan River. We take visiting professors out, we take courses there, and we use it for our own research. The perfect place to test and validate our beaver dam capacity model. We developed some uh, network modeling tools that basically model all 25,000 kilometers of streams in the state of Utah, and we model their capacity to support this dam building activity by beaver. We know that there's a lot more additional capacity to support beaver dams. The next step is to try and quantify what that will do to the hydrology. What beaver dams do is they fundamentally alter the delivery of water, sediment, and nutrients by slowing it down, giving it places to infiltrate. It creates a mosaic of habitats that are important for birds, for fish, for plant species. The deposits that are behind these beaver dams, most people think that they're just filled with fines and mud, but in fact they're filled with a big mixture of grain sizes. If I'm a cutthroat trout, I'm looking for good places to spawn. A lot of times these old beaver dams that have filled to the brim with sediment change from that sort of slow energy environment into a uh, more a higher energy environment. This creates wonderful spawning gravels. Beaver dams over thousands and thousands of years have been built. They've filled up with sediment and they've built this valley bottom up. And the sediments that they filled this thing up with are the perfect sponge. And so the real storage from beaver dams is not in the ponds. It's by raising these water tables and then saturating and flooding that whole valley bottom. And they slowly release it out over the long hot summer. Beavers can provide some of the benefits that we obtain by building reservoirs, but it can be done in a much more subtle, cheap way that's not going to have as large an impact on the landscape. Large reservoirs tend to disrupt the, the natural environment, this flow of uh, nutrients and water and biota. Beaver dams are naturally part of the system. The plants and animals have co-evolved with them and they provided these ecosystem services uh, for millennia. If you look at all the streams and rivers in the West, a huge proportion of them intersect very productive rangelands. And so we've had some very promising collaborations with ranchers that they've noticed in their lifetime since beavers have been trapped out of some of the streams on their ranches and on their allotments that uh, the streams have been sized and they go dry every summer. Um, whereas they used to have perennial flow when they had beaver in them. And so they're interested in getting that more reliable year-round water source and feeding the valley bottom and getting better forage production for their cattle. There's proposals on the table right now to put major reservoirs and start an era of dam building. Those proposals come with incredibly huge price tag for fairly modest storage capacity and some incredible impacts ecologically and recreationally to some of these systems. Beaver restoration, we're talking about chump change. You know, you can employ this rodent to go out and uh, potentially do a lot of the work for you. It does require some careful planning and some logistics, but it's the sort of thing where we think it's a much more viable, sustainable approach. Thousands to ten to thousands of beaver dams could be an alternative to, say, large, very expensive man-made dams. I've been really privileged and excited to come to Utah State and be able to work with other researchers on water issues um, that just span a whole range of disciplines from engineering to hydrology, geomorphology, ecology. We think our research can help um, solidify this as a very serious and legitimate uh, alternative.